Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120, decimal 9. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, Malaysian uh, 370. Breaking news tonight, a Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing. Hello, everybody. Good night. Technology tonight with Ash and Forbes. I'm just running with that to see how it sounds. Uh, good to see you guys. Glad to be here with everybody. Uh, already a lot of people in the comments. Uh, already a lot of people watching. I want to do a quick shout out to some of the people that are following with the investigation, following with the case. Uh, everybody in the chat, villain, uh, wake up, everybody. Uh, Joe, Cat Cans, Alex, Pamela, good to see you. Dead Rabbit, Heather Birdie, nice to see you. Appreciate you. Yeah, I did like it. I do like it. I want to have some edits to make potentially do it, but I really like it a lot, Heather. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, Z Alpino Show Goat. Nice to see you. Jack Trading. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. Arcade Outpost says looking for group. Yeah, let's go. Steve, Truth Seeker, Sham Six, Show Goat, Braza Brian, Neil. Wow, Chip Messiah, Cat Can, says Highness. Hey, Heather, Beninator, nice to see you. Delete, my dudes. Alex, good to see you. Joe McD, Sham, Alexander, Chris, Dave PNW, good to see you, man. Stop triggering the Redditors, he says. I can't. It's just in my nature. It's just in my nature. Uh, Cypher, Ramos, appreciate you, man. Oh, Chris D, nice to see you. Mick West, a government opera moron. Maybe a combination of both. Goosebumps, good to see you. UFO Nut, good to see you. Lots of people in here early tonight. Appreciate it. John, Joshua, uh, Sean, nice to see you, Sean. Appreciate you, man. Recognize a lot of people from the replies. Uh, first, right off the bat, like I, I think a lot of people wonder, you know, how do you reply? Or I saw somebody who thought that I was a bot because I like people's posts. The reason why I like people's comments and replies is because I appreciate the people who follow and comment and reply. So if I like your posts, usually it's because I like you and I like what you said. So uh, thank you very much for that. I try to do my best to reply to as many people as possible. But the truth is, I probably won't be able to keep that up. It's already hard enough as it is. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for help, helping out. Evan, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you as well, man. Um, so what are we going to be talking about tonight? So tonight we are going to be going over some of the most recent updates, a little bit of a recap in terms of what's been going on the last day and a half or so. And then we are going to take a look at, I've got a Thomas Bearden video that some of you have already looked at, but I want to go over, I took a bunch of notes on it and I want to go over it with some of the people that are newer to the investigation uh, about some clips. I've got like, I don't know, quite a few here, like 15 clips or so. So uh, I don't know how long we're going to go tonight, but uh, we will see. So first biggest thing that came up, let me take a look. Let me uh, get my Twitter up here for you guys. Oh, gosh. I, I wish there was a way to like not have messages show up so so easily when you're in your Twitter. There's probably a way. Uh, if anyone knows, that'd be great. I just don't want to reveal DMs as much as I can avoid it. Um, so let's go. Let's get, let's get this show on the road, chat. Let's get it on the road. Also, you guys get me hyped up when you uh, when I see you guys in the replies here. So, uh, you know, let's just make some let's just make some bold claims right off the bat here, everybody. Uh, the MH three seven zero videos are real. I think that anybody who's denying the authenticity of these videos is uh, off their rocker. There's never been any videos that have as much evidence as these videos have in them. Uh, it's 
the case is incredible. The case blows me away as the guy who's been going into it and reviewing it because of the magnitude of the amount of evidence that goes into the, the videos and, and everything around them. So what's been going on uh, this last day? So first of all, the post from last night, holy crap, it blew up. It got huge. So remember this post I made last night with the satellite video? 1.8 million views. 1.8 million. Got huge. So, I, you know, and I'll just read it out here again. In order for the MH370 satellite video to be fake, one would need to explain how the hoaxer knew the correct location of the plane in the Nicobar Islands nine days before the raw telemetry data was publicly available. Somebody today posted me a random obscure blog post that uh, speculated that the plane could have gone within like 100 miles of where the coordinates are. And they said, that's proof that the hoaxer knew where the plane was. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so the hoaxer found a random blog that no one knows about and was like, that's where I'm going to put the plane 100 miles away from where this person thinks it is. Like, these are the people that are just mentally deficient, just mentally deficient. This is the logic of the, the debunkers that we deal with. Why is it that all the most mentally unstable people out there are all debunkers? Like, is it, is it all because they have some kind of weird savior complex where they just or like inferiority complex? I really don't understand it. It's super bizarre. And we'll get to the guy from yesterday as well real quick. But let's finish this. So. They would need to explain how the hoaxer knew what low Earth orbit imagery satellite looked like before anyone in the public had ever seen it. Everyone thought satellites looked straight down. Trump posted the first LEO satellite picture of USA 224 in 2019, five years after the video was published. They have to explain why the hoaxer would add NRO 22, which was the first launch of the cyber system in 2006, and why they would add coordinates at all. Any contradictory tracking data or black boxes would have ended the hoax. Then they have to explain how and why the program they made the program with accurate satellite coordinates that shift to six decimal places on top of dynamic video. Then they would have to explain why the video has different frame rate between the mouse at 24 frames per second and the background of six frames per second, consistent with the Citrix session logged into a remote terminal. Then they would have to explain why the view is cropped on all sides, consistent with a screen recording of said terminal. Then they, lastly, they would have to explain why the video is 3D stereoscopic when we were able to convert it to full 3D with USA 229 and sister satellite in the Malacca Strait, staring down the coordinates of uh, 1840 UTC, March 7th. Good luck. So what did they do? Do you think that they addressed any of it? No, they did not. Instead, what they did was they posted fake. Where is it? Is the community note gone? Did they get rid of the community note? No, wait. Wait, what? They were They removed the community note. The community note is gone. Wait, what chat? Chat. Chat. There were two. They posted two fake community notes on my post and they're not there anymore. Wh Elon Musk. Elon. He came through. What? Let's go! Wow, they're gone. Elon, he removed the community fake community notes. He removed the fake communities. Get fucked, debunkers! Oh my god, there was two. There was two fake community notes that they posted on here. Two of them. I'd never even seen one that got two community notes. They're gone. They got removed. Wow. I've never, ever seen a community note get removed on a post that has over a million views on it. Never before have I seen that. This must have just happened. I was ready to read the community notes to you guys, and they're not there anymore. There was two of them that the debunkers uh, posted on my content. Wow. Wow. Get effed, debunkers. Get effed. Because the thing was, their debunks didn't address anything that I said in my post. Nothing in my post was addressed by their claims. And the stuff was like, this is obviously fake. Blah, blah. Like, what the what kind of comment is that for a community note? That's a if you want to post an angry reply, post an angry reply. If you have your opinions about whether or not you think the videos are fake, post it in the replies. 
Community notes are not meant for opinions. It's meant to correct factual information. What I'm posting here is factual information about the videos that nobody has ever addressed. <laughs> so, wow, that's wild. So one of them was, this video is 100% verified to be fake. First of all, that first line goes and shows right away. I have a screenshot of one of them. First line shows right away that this is a Redditor nut job debunker. You cannot possibly know it's a verified to be fake unless you have the actual hoaxer with the proof. Making a recreation is not proof. Finding a 2D picture is not proof. None of those things are proof that the videos are fake. If you think they are, you need to like go to school again and learn how logic and critical thinking work. That's not how proof works. The clouds in the video have been found in an old stock photo on the Wayback Machine. Yes, in 2016. That's how far back the stock photo goes in the Wayback Machine, 2016. The video is from 2014. Do you know how math works? Do you know how time works? To be clear, whoever says, like, who writes something like this? Like, what kind of sicko in your head do you have to be to write this? To be clear, we have the actual stock photos, not video photos. Yes. And there can't be stock photos in these videos because it requires a full 3D render and we have accurate 3D lighting. We have clouds that match in two different perspectives from two different angles, which means you're not looking at a picture. Is it? Does that go through to people's heads? And then they link to Reddit. Of all places, the proof is Reddit, which is like, you might as well link to Wikipedia as your answer. Reddit is like infinitely even worse than it. So... Honestly, guys, I'm super hyped right now. Undebunked chat. Undebunked. That's awesome. And here, I literally posted the proof like right below it as well. You know, the crazy part too is I knew they were going to do this to my post. I knew they were going to do it. And I called it out in... Uh, I called it out in my uh, Discord actually as well. I called it out in my Discord. I said that they were going to community note my thing. And I almost added another comment on here. This image shows volumetric 3D lighting. Now, some people out there may go, well, I don't see it. Uh, I don't know what 3D lighting really means or whatever. So let me just show you guys. I, I took another screenshot of it. Where, oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, right here. I've been saving some additional debunks for these people out there. Actually, that was I had it already set up for you guys to see there. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Okay. So here you go. This is what 3D lighting is. Backlit, backlit, not lit, backlit, front lit. This is 3D lighting. So just for anyone who's super confused, that's what 3D lighting looks like. That's how it's not a 2D picture. You can't do this in a 2D picture. You need to have 3D uh, environment for that and produce 3D lighting effects. So pretty awesome. The thing, only thing I like Reddit for is if I go to read about like uh, anime or video games or something like that. That's about the only thing that Reddit's good for. Um, when it comes to factual information and news stuff, it's terrible. Okay. Well, now that I'm, we see that, I'm, I'm happy. And so here is the other video because they had weaponized community notes against me. Here's the video where you can clearly see. So some people were also confused by this video. Okay, the reason why the drone video is inverted is because the drone is on the other side of perspective of the satellite video, which means in order to get it to match up, you have to invert or you have to mirror the perspective. So that's the only reason why this has been mirrored so that you can see the clouds accurately line up. Now, the first cloud we see right here, that cloud we see right there, this cloud right here is not this cloud down here. The drone is most likely at a higher altitude or a similar altitude because we, we see it on a similar altitude here. And so what's happening here is you're actually seeing this cloud back here behind it. The angle is going to be something like this at an angle. So you may say, oh, well, why am I not seeing this cloud in the forefront? The other thing too is we don't know how much higher this plane is than the clouds here because we're seeing it from super far away at an angle. We don't really know. So this is the first cloud right here. Second cloud is right here. So you see the second cloud? The second cloud is this one right here. That one's obvious, really obvious. So this also shows that you would have to create a full 3D rendered environment. Again, proves that this isn't a 2D cloud picture. Um, so 
posted that, decided after they started weaponizing the community notes on me that I was going to go all in on these because, you know what, I didn't want to, but then you see these people going all in. We found the person. I, I went and looked through this uh, genuine Marmalade Falcon. So everybody gets like a bird name when you're a community noter. Um, and uh, guys, so, and also if I see, like, well, can I block people or whatever? People like this, dude, you're... Uh, I guess you can't block people in, in, in Twitter, so we have to deal with it. Um, no one's ever moving on. So just to be clear, though, as well, no one. I'm never moving on. The, the, the videos are never going to go away. So if, if you're out there and you're like, hey, I don't want to talk about MH370. Uh, I don't want to talk about the videos. Make the videos go away. That's never going to happen in this life. Never. So get used to it. These videos are never going away. Not ever. If at any point in time I feel like people have forgotten about them, I'm just going to post them more. When people try to debunk and attack the videos and weaponize community notes against me, the only thing that's going to happen is I'm going to strike back 100 times as hard. And I'm going to talk about the videos even more. That's how this is going to play out. There's no stopping it from happening. There's nothing you can say that will change that. doesn't matter if you're a debunker, if you're a UFOlogy type person. Yes, we will move on after it gets solved, after it gets figured out, after the U.S. government makes a statement about it. So if you want the videos to go away, the best thing you can do, regardless of what side you're on, is get the U.S. government, the DOD, to make an official statement about the videos. That's the only way these videos ever go away in this life. So just want to make sure that that's clear for everybody that's out there. Um, because there's too much evidence. I'm not letting this go. And it's not a matter of me being committed to it. It's that I have looked at all the evidence personally myself, and it is the most evidence that's ever admitted, ever existed in any criminal case in the history of the world. That's how much evidence is. I can convince a jury of 12 random people that these videos are real, despite the fact that we're looking at some kind of teleportation event. That's how powerful the evidence is. 239 people disappeared with no answer whatsoever. They never found a single piece of the plane. The official search didn't. Found nothing. So... No, we're not going to let this go. Deserves the truth. Now, um, so this genuine Marmalade Falcon, if you guys don't know how community notes work, you get a bird name. And you can, people can look up your bird name. Now, it doesn't link directly to your name, your real name or anything like this. So this isn't a doxing or anything like that. And Wall Street Advisor, don't mess with Wall Street Advisor. Wall Street Advisor, like... <laughs> This dude is forensic analysis master. He found the bird name person uh, community note thing. And so I start looking through it. And what do I see with it? They are literally weaponizing it against me and against other people as well. Adding minor volumetric rendering effects to a 2D image is trivial and has been done since the 90s. Again, these are opinions. These are opinions, not facts, opinions. This type of stuff has no place whatsoever in community notes. This person should be permanently banned from community notes. Their Twitter account that's tied to this should be permanently banned. This is a weaponization of disinformation. And I start looking at all their other stuff. And not only are they linking me, like basically hitting every single one of my posts, they start hitting people that I know as well. Look at this. They're on all over my posts. They hit my buddy Rufus here as well. Who he believes in flat earth, but who cares, man? People are allowed to believe whatever the hell they want. His post just says, why would it say this on the computer, my dudes, with a screenshot image here? And he's there community noting that. Then they hit my buddy Concerned Citizen, where he's talking about this Antarctic anomaly. This is an engagement farming account that regularly lies and posts misinformation. That's what the note is. How is this user contributor not banned from the platform? This is a direct weaponization of community notes. There's no ambiguity here. This is literally should not be allowed. This type of behavior that you're looking at right here should be a permanent ban from the entire platform. You should have your main account banned for manipulating the platform like this. He does it some more. He does it to all the kinds of accounts. This is an engagement farming account that regularly lies and posts misinformation. What is this? This is like a Reddit mod on steroids. He did the same thing to Rufus. He literally just copies it. This is an engagement farming account. This is like some mentally ill, mentally unstable Redditor abusing the community notes program. Oh, this is my other buddy here as well. I mean, I think so, right? Yeah. I mean, wow. This is crazy, man. 
Look at these comments. Of course, this is not a UFO. Of course, this is not a UFO. Who talks like this? They even went after Think Tank. Think Tank, if you're watching, buddy, the same guy's after you as well. This is this person needs to be permanently banned from the platform. And any other people that they see like this on community notes need to be permanently banned. Direct weaponization of the system. Absolutely incredible. Okay. Uh, so don't mess with Wall Street Advisor. Wall Street Advisor will find you scamming 100%. That dude is a beast. Straight up beast. So then Mick West, again. So Mick West, he is the most notorious uh, serial debunker in the entire UFO community. He has even tried to debunk the real DOD Navy videos. Uh, and he was actually the person who had debunked them before they had been proven to be true. And then even after they were proven to be true, he still tried to debunk them after that as well. He didn't admit he was wrong. He never admitted he was wrong. Um, and he's claimed, I think, on at least four or five occasions that there's no point looking at the MH370 video since they're so fake or whatever. But after my post got over a million views, he came out of the woodwork again. And why did he come out of the woodwork? Because every time the situation gets too much attention, he has to come in there to try to post fake debunks about it. Every single time, without a doubt, he even admitted to it in a Skeptical Inquirer article. Um, I might even pull it up for you guys. Skeptical. The fellows in the Skeptical Inquirer include such people as Neil deGrasse Tyson and um, Bill Nye, the science guy. So that's the caliber of people we're dealing with with Skeptical Inquirer. Um, so here is his article. I'll post it for the share for you guys. And let me pull this stream yard thing up over here as well. Whoops. Sorry, give me a second to correct this out. Okay, this is the Mick West MH370 teleportation hoax. So again, I'm just going to say this, guys. I mean, I'm going to keep saying this until it sticks into Mick West. When these videos get proven true, I am going to send the families after Mick West to sue him for everything that he has. I will use the precedent of Sandy Hook as the basis for it. I have been documenting everything Mick West says and does. We have a vast amount of evidence that he has intentionally lied about the videos. Uh, he's been given many, 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 many chances to back away from his false claims about the videos that he claims that he knows are 100% fake. It's literally no different than Alex Jones saying that Sandy Hook didn't happen. It's exactly the same thing. He can't possibly know this. The official story is that nobody knows what happened to the plane. We have literally two videos showing what happened, and he makes false claims that he knows they're fake when he can't possibly know that. It's literally the same disinformation that he's pushing that's harmful to the families who are trying to get the truth, and they deserve to take all of his money at a minimum. In my, in my personal opinion, he should also face criminal conspiracy charges Um uh, under there's like a, a thing that basically says even if you're not the person who committed the conspiracy if you help to cover it up you are part of the conspiracy as well uh if i was in charge of the doj i would charge him with that as well i would throw him in prison for the rest of his life it's one thing to debunk random ufo videos that are out there it is a completely another thing to lie about what happened to 239 people just because you don't think it can be possible that's exactly the same type of opinion that people like alex jones would say about sandy hook and I'm actually of the opinion that that type of speech should be protected. But we've now set the precedent that it's not protected. So that's the precedent that will be used against Mick West in the future. Everything that he says and does online related to these videos is being documented and will be used against him in a court of law in the future when these videos are proven to be real. Now, the reason why this is important is down here at the bottom. He says, why is it important? Why is he doing this again? Why bother? So why bother? I didn't at first, but if we let things fester, they sometimes grow. This hoax wasn't worth addressing back in 2014 when it had just a few thousand views and most people thought it was a hoax. But when it started to get millions of views, things changed. If it's not addressed, then many thousands of people who might be prone to things such as QAnon or believing the election was stolen will get into sucked into believing this. And if they believe the government can carry out and then cover up an event of this magnitude, then there's very little else they won't believe. Getting sucked into this via, this via a harmless, seemingly interested interest in UFOs 
could lead to getting sucked into far more dangerous rabbit holes. Who the fuck talks like this? Who talks like this? This is just straight up projection. He's not worried about other people. He's worried about himself. He's worried about what he will fall be forced to believe if these videos get real. And he's literally admitting his intentions right here. When people say who they are, listen to them. It wasn't worth addressing in 2014 when it only had a few thousand views. But when it starts to get millions of views, that's when he gets involved on it. He's literally saying who he is here. And he did the exact same thing once again today. When it only had a few thousand views, he doesn't jump in. When it gets over a million, that's when he's got to post his disinformation and misinformation to try to get people to not look at the videos anymore. He literally admits it right here in his own words on Skeptical Inquirer where he gets paid to post and write. So I'm grateful for all the work people did tracking down the original images and, and analyzing the many issues with the videos. I wish I'd done a little more for myself, but in the fight against disinformation, every bit helps. I agree, Mick West. In the fight against disinformation, every bit helps. Now, let's go look at some disinformation. So Mick West makes the false claim that there are jittery contrails in this video. And he uses another comparison video to prove that it's somehow different. So what did people do right away? They went and showed him those exact same contrails that he says don't jitter, jitter the moment you change the bitrate. You can see the contrails jittering, lower bitrate. It's a lower bitrate artifact. 100% proof that Mick West debunk is fabricated, but there's more. It goes on. Not only that, and I want to thank the people that did this. Is Again, this is not me. So just like what Mick West says, I want to be grateful to people that did the work tracking down how these uh, fake debunks were produced and proving it without any shadow of a doubt. It's BS came in and said, this stabilization software itself can make the contrails shake as if they are part of the background. This is what I did with pro DAD stabilization. And you can see the contrails and the border shaking up and down in the same way. It is the stabilization algorithm, not composting. Uh, not compositing, sorry, not comp composting. <laughs> Composting. <laughs> Compositing. Ugh. Okay. Uh, and no martini tonight, guys. I got to try to be uh, awake tomorrow and 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 functional. So, uh, two conclusive debunks that absolutely prove Mick West's claim to be wrong. Does he correct his claim? No. Doesn't correct his claim. Uh, he's a guy that claims to be uh, based on facts and logic and reason. But when presented with facts and logic and reason, he completely ignores it. He hand waves it away the exact same way that he claims to me. This is why I have blocked Mick West. He will never be unblocked. Um, I'm not going to unblock him. I'm done with the debunkers that are out there. I don't want them to see my content. I don't want them to be able to post fake uh, um, community notes on my content. And uh, like they've been doing in weaponized community notes against my content. So I will not be unblocking them. I want them to go do anything else with their lives. But I will be using this evidence against Mick West and giving it to the families in the future. Because these videos will be proven to be true. I don't know how long it's going to take, uh, but we'll find out. Now, there's more. Mick West actually proved all the debunks wrong today. He finally showed. So normally, when these guys show the comparisons, they only compare a modified version of the Pyromania VFX to the video. So on the right, you see the real video here. You see, I guess this is a modified version of the Pyromania VFX. I'm not even sure. They never really tell you how they produce this. But in this one, he finally showed us what the real one looks like. And when you look at the real effect here, you can tell that it's not the same as this one at all. First of all, it's not even the right size. You can see here that they're doing some kind of manipulation with this blast around it. But even if you look at the blast, there's a few aspects that look similar, but they don't exactly match. Like this whole thing on the top right is not here at all. This blast on the right here doesn't match over here as well either. Um, so this is conclusively not a match. This goes to show that Mick West fabricated a fake debunk with his debunker followers. 100% fabricated it, passed it off as a match. And they did this on Reddit. When you see the post on Reddit as well, you will see that the uh, they never show you the original. They only show you after they've modified it. And they, they kind of draw circles and lines to try to distract you from the fact that it doesn't match. Um, so if people like 
Joe Rogan or the other people are out there. I want you to see the lengths to which debunkers are willing to go to falsify fake debunks. This is what the real effect looks like. This is the zap. Is that the same? Are those the same? Now there's more. And I'm going to try to get through this a little faster. Um, where's the other one? Okay. Now, this is a person that actually worked on the drones, literally worked on the drones and tried to correct McWest. Uh, you guys can go look up his post called Detail the World. They went back and forth with 20 posts. Mick West absolutely refused to listen to somebody who literally worked on the drones that was trying to explain that the shake is normal and natural and that there's nothing unusual about what he claimed with the jittery contrails. Mick West refused to listen. You can go through the whole conversation. Absolutely refused to listen. Literally wouldn't listen to a guy that's an expert that's worked on the drones directly. This is why I blocked McWest. I won't be dealing with McWest anymore. The guy has got a screw loose in his head. He needs like real help. If you are writing crazy shit like he wrote in the Skeptical Inquirer, you need like some serious help, man. Like this is the most egotistical thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a cry for help, honestly. Um, and it goes to show why he is posting like fake debunks and trying to convince himself um in general scary stuff man now it's not over yet um the last piece as well is i got him to admit that the pyromania vfx doesn't match got mick west to admit it huh why aren't these in the right order so we had a back and forth you guys can find the back and forth if you want yourself you can see it i only was able to clip some of it here but the pyromania vfx objectively does not match this is not an opinion this is a fact this is the same thing I said on Danny Jones, and I broke Danny Jones's mind in real time. The stock effect has never been modified in the way that he falsely argued it was. Not in any of the major four media that we've already found it used. We found it used in the Killing Time video game. We found it used in the Attack on Titan uh, advertisement. We found it used in Starship Troopers, cult classic movie from the 90s. And it was even used in Eastbound and Down. Huge television show produced by HBO. None of them modified it. Mick West is a scammer, a fraud, and worse, he is a liar. And then his response to that, is it somehow impossible to modify stock of art when you use it? This is him literally claiming that it doesn't match. That's him literally claiming it. Obviously not. It's very clear to anyone with familiarity with graphics that it's the same thing. What? You just said that you have to modify it. That makes it by default, not the same thing. By definition, not the same thing. And then he pivots to something about the stock the stock clouds, which I've already addressed the stock clouds thing. We just looked at the image. We just showed that it's 3D accurate lighting. He's never addressed that claim at all either, of course. And so then I say again, just to correct everybody out there, once again, you are making the claim that someone moved all the pixels around change the color, and change the number of frames. The onus is on you. I don't see a list of steps to perfectly recreate your claim. His claim is that someone changed it all around to make it only a few frames, changed all the frames around, and moved all the pixels around individually. This is what it would take. He did, needs to support that claim. Not the onus, the burden of proof is on the person making the claim. You say that this has been a modified. You need to prove it. So you would need to make a list of steps that will get it to a 100% pixel perfect match. If it is as simple as modifying it, like he claims with VFX, it should be extremely easy to give us a short list of steps that will make it a 100% pixel perfect match. If it's much longer than that, it goes to show it's not as easy as he thinks. And this is the reason why they won't do it. This is the reason why when anyone brings up the Pyromania VFX, all you have to do is say how many pixels match. Because it will show that they've never done a pixel comparison, that they've never tried to consider how long it would take to make it into a perfect match. And it also shows they don't know how. And so this conclusively debunks the pyromania VFX. There is no debate. Like Mick West said, there's no debate about it. It conclusively does not match. Mick West is a fraud, a scammer, and a liar. He promoted this. The Corridor crew are also frauds, scammers, and liars. They didn't even find the debunk themselves. They just stole it from Mick West. 
and then they passed it off to millions of people on the internet and lied to them about it, literally lied on their posts, claiming that it was a perfect match when it was not. That was objectively a lie when they said that, and they deceived millions of people regarding this uh, these videos. I still get people claiming, posting the videos of the Corridor crew in my replies saying, I thought the Corridor crew debunked this. That's how powerful disinformation from the Corridor crew in McWest is. They factually lied. My claim is factual. His claim is an uneducated opinion. Factually, this effect does not match and is not in the MH370 drone video. Your opinion, this is to Mick West, is that it was modified in a way that has never been done before that you cannot provide recreation steps for. He didn't prove anything when he claims that this 100% debunks the video. That's making an objectively false statement. So this is what the evidence will be against him in the court of law when these videos are proven real and he tries to claim that he never said it or whatever. He said it repeatedly. He's doubled down, tripled down, refused to address the fact that he's lying. Um, that's how it is. Now we're going to switch over to scalar physics in just a minute, guys. Sorry, I know you guys have been waiting. Uh, I just wanted to get through a quick update. So 30 minutes, uh, probably another five or 10 minutes, and then we'll switch over to scalar physics. Appreciate you guys. Now... The last thing I want to do here, because this stuff is just super annoying, honestly. Um, and yeah, so Ace TV, Ace TV is also a dude you don't want to mess with. And he also showed that this floating that you see from the uh, and the jerkiness that you see from the contrails, or that's really not smoke, is due to a down formatting of the video into YouTube as well. So if you want to check that out. Now, one last thing I want to point out is the guy from yesterday and the uh, software. The What was it called? What is it called? Here it is, this one. This, this is huge, guys. 100,000 views. This is big, man. So this person yesterday, guys, uh, I'm not going to embarrass him anymore and play the space. But if you guys heard it yesterday, check it out. But this guy claimed that he had some kind of proof the video. He knew the software that was used to create the videos, which I thought was funny because everybody who's tried to recreate the videos has used After Effects. And I kept telling them, you can't use After Effects to recreate these videos. And now it looks like the debunkers want to switch over. My guess is what happened was this guy showed, made this claim that, um, what's it called? Quick Train Modeler is the software that was used. My guess is the other debunkers went, dude, shut up. That disproves all of our debunks and got mad at him. Because if this is the software, that means every recreation today, it's been a fabrication. And they, all, they have been, obviously. But the better part was that when we went to the website and checked it out, the DOD and all branches of the military and intelligence community use this software. So this could be the very software the cyber system uses to produce the video that we see could be the very software i called this company up uh like eight times they didn't pick up their phone a single time and during normal business hours i called their technical line i called their general inquiry line they didn't pick up at all pretty weird so this guy deactivated his account yesterday uh blocked me and then deactivated his account reactivated the account today and now he's just way off the deep end so um, and I can't see his posts, but somebody posted uh, a clip of one of them, which I'll just show you guys a snapshot. Because this, I, I just want, like, I don't understand why all the mentally ill people are all debunkers. It seems like a very weird coincidence to me. Um, so here is his post from earlier today he came back online i i don't i haven't really watched any much of his post he, he clearly hasn't come up with whatever debunk uh he thought he was gonna do related to these videos i can't wait to talk to the software people and get a, a, a official on the record statement from them on whether or not their software is used in the cyber system um uh, because if it is to me that's absolute proof the videos are real uh and i'm gonna ask the aaro as well um so here he's pinging Mick West and whoever Darren Peach is. I don't even know who that is. Uh, the MH370 dude is in control of a large number of sock puppet accounts across Reddit and Twitter. Is he talking about me? I'm working with a few people to identify the accounts through stylometrics. Does, does anyone in the chat even know what stylometrics means? If you are out there and you know what stylometrics means, uh, please let me know because I have no idea. 
should be a report soon. Guys, I can't wait for this report uh, because as a statement of fact, I have one Reddit account that I haven't posted on since I posted my last post of the conspiracy subreddit like a month and a half ago. And I only have one Twitter account that I've posted anything on ever. So I don't know what this guy's imagining in his head <laughs> or what he thinks I do all day. Like I have a normal job. Obviously, this guy doesn't have any real job, but I have a real job. So apparently he only deactivated his account and he reactivated. You can't really tell the difference. The account didn't exist yesterday. We, we looked at it while we were online and then it got reactivated. Um, it's pretty weird. This is super weird, man. And th the scary part is this, guys, is that this is not the first time I've had people make these kind of weird claims against me. Usually when you see the this, uh, it's projection usually. Usually when people make these claims, it's because that's what they're doing, is that they have a bunch of accounts, a bunch of fake accounts that they do to manipulate stuff. Uh, we saw this in the UFO community as well, where they're doing this as well in that community. And they, they tried to claim that I was purchasing fake followers. And the irony is they are literally people that purchase fake followers. <laughs> I've never done any of that stuff, guys. I've never purchased any fake followers. Uh, I don't have any other accounts that I'm secretly on. People will like, they on Reddit especially, like you'll see people say this a lot. They'll be like, oh, hey, Ashton, when like people will support me, they think that everybody that supports me must be like me on an alt. It's super weird. And they're not joking. Like they're not making jokes about it. They like actually just think that. Okay, so I think, are we good on this, guys? Hey, Crypto, appreciate you, man. Yeah, I think all these guys are probably affiliated with the Gorilla Skeptics. So, and if you guys don't know how these guys operate, it's starting to become very clear. We've start, we've learned a lot about how these people operate from watching them uh, and watching them try to coordinate, attack me, attack the case, debunk the videos. They use discords that are they're in together with one another, and that's how they coordinate. There's also a video about Reddit, which I don't know if you guys have seen. I will, I'm going to probably try to download it and post it on Twitter to watch so you guys can watch it in its entirety on Twitter. It's the craziest shit I've ever seen. A 12 year old, 13 year old Italian kid became the third highest upvoted account on Twitter. And he found out that it's all, all of Reddit's just a huge, or sorry, on, on Reddit, not on Twitter. He found out the whole thing was a huge scam filled with like 16 year old Indian people gaming the system and 35 year old perverts uh, just gaming Reddit nonstop. And then you have people like this that are groups, malicious groups of people of debunkers who they form little bubbles and uh, anything that's not within their little sphere of influence, they attack it, they destroy it. This is why Reddit's become total shit is people like this. And it's not just them. There's other little groups like that as well. But this is why Reddit's become an echo chamber of completely like mentally ill people with blue hair and stuff like that. Which, if you have blue hair, nothing personal. But um, the people that have blue hair on Reddit, they they are uh, yeah questionable uh, moral um, standing. Stylometry possesses a significant privacy challenge in its ability to unmask anonymous authors or link pseudonyms. Yeah, sure. They can do whatever they want. I, I'm literally nothing to hide. I don't have any other accounts. So anything they do like that only will discredit them and only show that they have serious mental issues. So I, I promote that guy doing all of that. This is the guy who supposedly was claiming that he had proof the videos were fake somehow. And he just never dropped it yesterday. He deactivated his account. He said he was going to drop it on June 1st, six weeks from now. But he gave us one of the strongest pieces of evidence we've ever had that these videos might be real. So pretty, pretty wild, man. Yeah, Kimberly James says, I'm a sock puppet account. <laughs> Kimberly James is secretly me, guys. That's secretly me on my off time. Okay, so I think we're good. I think it's science time chat. Uh, any research on TR3B? Not really. I think if you're interested in TR3B, you should check out uh, Salvatore Pius's patent, Inertial Mass Reduction for a Transmedium Craft. Um, truth is, guys, I'm not really trying to, to link any more other stuff or even broach too far outside the realm of what I've already dug into. And it's not because I don't think any of that stuff's interesting. Uh, but what I want more than anything is the answer for the MH370 families and for the case and for the videos. So... Until I get that, I'm probably going to be focused on MH370 stuff and science around MH370 stuff. If that gets proven, whatever, I first of all would take a vacation, uh, probably step away from the internet for like a few weeks and then come back and do who knows. I'll look into some crazy stuff after that. 
but I want to have this case not be tainted by anything else or any other claims or any other way where it can be discredited. PJ Mike, thank you very much, man. Appreciate that. Be prepared for Greenwald and Green Street coming after you. They're part of the debunker triad with Mick West. Science is the key. Thanks for all you do. You're 100% correct. They've all they've blocked me already. Green Street has blocked me already. Uh, I dunked on Greenwald like twice already. He blocked me. I dunked on him. He blocked me. He unblocked me. I dunked on him again, and he blocked me again. Greenwald is a complete stooge, and Green Street is a total moron. Guy is a huge idiot. Uh, Green Street was actually retweeting that, what was it, T. Powell guy? Green Street was retweeting the guy that thought I was a, a foreign spy and that I was uh, harming the defenseless defense contractors <laughs> and I was abusing FOIA requests. Green Street retweets that guy just to show you how wackadoo Green Street is. Like, <laughs> dude... <laughs> Man, Green Street, if you're out there, buddy, and you are retweeting nut jobs on Reddit, um, yeah, say goodbye to whatever journalistic integrity you had. <laughs> Good luck proving I'm a foreign spy or whatever crazy shit you guys are uh, trying to dig into, or that I have a bunch of accounts. This is like Aerospace Chris when Aerospace Chris was like coming at me, and the, him and this other nut job, Jeremy McGowan, goes by uh, something Osiris on Twitter. Guy, this guy is so psycho that he literally films people. It, every interaction he has with people, he records it. Phone calls. If they're in his car, he was admitted that he was filming people in, his, in their car, recording them in the car. He's a psychopath. <laughs> These guys have in their minds, because this is what happens with mentally ill people, is that they imagine stories in their head uh, about other people that they have no connection with. And they had imagined that I fake talking to Arrow. They had imagined that jo the Joe Rogan situation was fake. They were proven wrong on all these things. Did they ever apologize or admit they were wrong? No, they never did. They never did. Um, <laughs> and and Green Street and Greenwald are like buddy buddy with these guys because it's just a bunch of nut jobs. Uh, and Green Street is clearly getting fed information from the government. Um, I don't know that for a fact. That's just my opinion. Uh, but I've done enough FOIA requests now to know that the only way you get information from FOIAs is if you uh, the government's feeding you information they want you to leak. If they want to hide something, they have a million ways to hide it. They can give any excuse that they want for it. So I, I wouldn't trust a single thing that Greenwald pushes out there. Green Street's reporting is just garbage. It's just garbage. <laughs> like, read anything the guy has posted. Like, it's like he got sexually assaulted by an alien, and now he's trying to prove that aliens can't be real to deal with the trauma. That's the impression I get with dealing with Green Street. Like, why is he so angry at something he has no reason to be angry about whatsoever? His reporting is completely full of bias and completely devoid of factual information. Okay. Yeah, the debunkers are definitely afraid. And here's the thing, too. Like... And this was an intentional thing on my part. I made them have skin in the game. The more they pushed on the videos being fake, the more I pushed back because I want to get them committed to it. Now they have skin in the game. Now if those videos end up getting proven real, it will destroy the reputation of half of UFO Twitter. It will permanently scar the reputation of all the debunkers. And it will end the careers uh, and debunking careers of some of them. Some of them may go to prison. Some of them will absolutely be sued for the statements that they've made, the false statements they made about the videos. So now they have skin in the game, 100%. The debunkers do. Um, so they should be afraid, actually, because if Arrow confirms these videos are real, that's the end. It's all over. So, uh, you know, I gave them many, 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 many chances to back away. They kept doubling down, kept doubling down, kept doubling down. Um, so it is what it is. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, if people have real proof of debunking, we will hear about it right away. They're not going to play the, the long game. On, oh, I'll release it six weeks from now or whatever. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding these people's feet to the fire. And the more they push back, the more I'm going to burn them. Simple as that. Uh, so anyway, everybody's been warned. And nobody can say that they weren't warned. Nobody can say they didn't know. I've made my intentions 100% clear and open and honest up front. Um, so there we go. Yeah. And this stuff's corroborated, right? Even the UFO stuff is corroborated. Uh, the more stuff that's out there and the science that's out there, it gets corroborated. And that's, what's going to lead us to our next thing here is we're going to do some scalar physics with Thomas Bearden. So one of the things I posted, I posted the drone video today. I mentioned how, 
Uh, it's corroborated by scalar physics as promoted by engineer Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden back in the 80s. In the 80s. Before I did, I looked in this case, I didn't know there was a Thomas Bearden. I didn't even know what scalar physics even meant. I didn't even know that was a thing. This guy had been talking about it since the 80s. And so this is another piece of evidence that shows the strength of the weight of the case is that the science is out there. Physicists and academics just don't get taught it and they never look into it and they have no idea about it. So we're going to take a look at it here now. Give me a second. Yeah, and I'm not, uh, I, I say this a lot, but I'm not your cl classic or typical influencer. I don't care about PR. I don't care about my brand. Uh, I don't care about any of that stuff. So if you come at me and you want to like feel like you want to get attention, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the attention that you want. Uh, if you want to come at me and try to attack me or the claims, prepare, prepare to get slapped right back. That's that's all there is to it. No, no martinis tonight. We are uh, we're not drinking tonight. I got I got to work, actually. <laughs> I got to try to work tomorrow. So even though it's a Friday. So I want to be able to wake up at a normal time. Okay, let me find my video file here. Guys, I love this stream yard too, by the way. I hope you guys like that intro. I've got uh, Heather Birdie. She's been making some sweet content for me. I greatly, greatly appreciate it because I don't have time to do all this content. Uh, Psychotronic. Which one is it? Uh, maybe this one? I'll head and see if this is the right one. No, this is the wrong one. Wrong one, chat. Wrong one. Wow, how do I remove this? Oh, this is the one I think's got super bad quality. So the first thing that we're going to look at here is we're going to look at how scalar physics works. So his interview is super great. Um, he basically starts off by explaining how you zero a vector out. So this is the idea of phase conjugation. So if I send a wave at the screen and it produce, and it's a mirror, it produces a wave straight back. We need to have that happen. We need to zero out our vector. So we have a wave going this way, wave going this way, cancel each other out, zero vector, but there's not, nothing left. What's left is a scalar potential, and this is shown by Maxwell's equations going back nearly 100 years before Heaviside rewrote them and simplified them, and we basically forgot our past. So the first one's at about, I think, 5.30. Here we go. And we cross it with itself. We will produce a zero vector resultant. Now, I want to stop right there. Let me say that again. Rigorously, we will produce a zero vector resultant. Now, the two vectors didn't go anywhere. They're still acting upon each other. They're still there. So very rigorously, what we produce is a zero vector system. That is a system of acting vectors, which sums to a zero resultant vector for translation. <clears throat> On the bottom, we show the same situation in quaternions. The quaternion is expressed very similar to the vector, except it has this little scalar term, W, sitting in there, with one big difference. When I cross, for example, Q, the quaternion with itself, I do not get just a zero vector. The vector part still goes to the zero vector resultant. But now I have suddenly the emergence of a scalar part, which did not go away. And the scalar part, it turns out, is in fact a function of the vectors that entered into the interaction. Notice on the bottom line that the cross product now is the square of the amplitude of one of the vectors. That's the urgency or the energy of the urgency of one vector on the other, stress-wise. And I've retained the zero vector. Because now we have to learn to read that exactly, which is what Heaviside did not do. What this equation says, and says very rigorously, is, is this. If these are two electromagnetic vectors or quaternions we started with, suppose they are the E fields, 
and the two E fields, for example, the two E vectors are identical, and we have an operation that's making the cross product. Suppose that's what's actually going on. What the bottom equation rigorously says is electromagnetically, you have a zero vector resultant with the system of two vectors still inside the zero vector system and still acting, producing the action A squared. Now, A squared is proportional to the energy of one of the vectors, the amplitude. Interesting. So the energy of the vector is going to be proportional to the a squared, which is going to be the cross product, if I said that correctly. So when you can when you have your waves phase each other out, or cancel each other out, that doesn't mean there's nothing there. The waves are still there. You're still left with your scalar potential. So this is the idea that even if you do this, even if you cancel the wave out through phase conjugation, it's not that there's nothing there. That's very important to understand. That's the whole basis for how we misunderstood uh, electrical engineering and physics. Energy, the urgency, so to speak, energetic urgency of one vector on the other. So we've captured a form of stress. And now suppose, for example, we're instead of dealing with static vectors, we're dealing with actual sine waves. Again, our Q cross Q is going to be a squared plus the zero vector resultant electromagnetically. I've got to say all that because I must not throw the zero vector away. It's a real thing. It's a vacuum engine, as a matter of fact. It is not a zero, except electromagnetically. But it's doing something else in the vacuum. So what he's just saying here is that even though we take away the vectors, even if we cancel the vectors out, we still have this stress going on. Think of like a squish ball, and you're squishing the ball, but of space itself. So you think of this squish happening. And if we can shoot that squish to a, low, a far distance, and then we can cross it with another squish, another beam, this is where we're going to be able to cr recreate the energy at a distance. Suppose Q is of the form, Q is equal to A sine omega T, standard kind of wave, simple sine wave type entity. Then Q, uh, Q cross Q will give you A squared sine squared omega T plus this zero vector. How do you read that? The way you read that equation rigorously, you don't throw the zero vector away. It's telling you something. It says I have a zero vector electromagnetic system whose active internal structure is giving me a scalar wave a squared sine squared omega t that's so there it is a squared sine squared omega t that's your scalar wave that's the product even though you cancel the waves out and the person here howler who said reminds me of sound wave phase cancellation it's almost maybe identical in fact i have it on good authority that sound waves can also produce anti-gravity and that our understanding of sound waves and the spin related to the uh I don't know what you call the sound wave or whatever produces it, if it's still an electron or what have you, can also be used to create anti-gravity using sound waves. So if you're interested in that, there's a potential where sound waves can also produce anti-gravity. Definitely would be worth checking out. Uh, Greer claims that scalar technology is what most concerns the ETs and they're prepared to help us get their shit together. That's pretty interesting. Guys, I, I just don't know if I really believe in all the ETs, but I also don't know how we could have figured out all this science and kept it hidden without some sort of intervention, honestly. So I don't know. I, I don't claim to know stuff that I can't possibly know. I just know that this is an explanation for what they're doing in the videos, and it's been out there for 38 years at minimum. Um, he should explain here how this creates gravity as well. Precisely what that equation says. Now, when you threw away the quaternion hmm. scalar part, you threw away the scalar wave. And notice that in the scalar wave, the energy, which is proportional to the A squared, is rhythmically varying. If the energy density of the local vacuum where this action is occurring is rhythmically varying, then rigorously, that is the definition of a local gravitational wave. And that what did you just say there? That's the definition of a local gravitational wave. 
if that product is rhythmically varying that's the definition what even is a gravitational wave do we even understand what that even means is this the answer to what a gravitational wave even is we know they're real there's no doubt that a gravitational wave is real ligo has seen them when neutron stars have collided they've seen the gravitational waves so the question is what is it and how do we produce it it has to be have a definition in physics that's the whole point of science i'm going to replay that i'm going to go back 30 seconds and notice that in the scalar wave the energy which is proportional to the a squared is rhythmically varying. If the energy density of the local vacuum where this action is occurring is rhythmically varying, then rigorously that is the definition of a local gravitational wave. And there is your precise definition or derivation of scalar electromagnetics. Well, there you go, chat. You guys now know, every all 2,000 people watching this now know how to make gravitational wave. There's your answer right then and there. Uh, stress of the vacuum itself is producing the scale, uh, our gravitational wave. It's going to be a product of the sine squared omega t, I think is what he said it was here. I can't even read it, times a squared. And I guess a squared is the variable that's the important one here in terms of making it more, more powerful or less powerful for your gravitational wave. Pretty interesting. Um, now let's look at... Let's scroll, go ahead a little bit. I'm just going to see if there's any messages. Oh, somebody said about the phones. Guys, the phones are uh, still ringing four days later. There, there's no logs for that anymore. That's too long ago. In fact, you can't FOIA private companies. And as far as I know, FOIAs are only in the United States. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm working a real job, although it's been very difficult to work a real job given all this. Acoustic levitation, sound waves. Yeah, you guys, you can definitely look into that as well. Um, very important, I think. So let's skip ahead to 12 minutes. So this part's good here because he talks of, well, this graph is really important to look at in terms of the electron. So the electron can either shoot straight ahead that would be our electric field. The magnetic field is going to be our curling field. And then what's a gravitational field? It's a stress. Remember magnetic monopoles? So what's a magnetic monopole? Magnetic monopole is where the action either just shoots out from all directions or goes in from all directions. You can argue that magnetic monopole is gravity manipulation, in my opinion. This is my real job. Yeah. Uh, you think satellites exist that shoot waves at... Uh, at plane to create the x absolutely i think this is real john johnson great comment the more i think about it why would you not have this equipped on a satellite you have two satellites that are in outer space they can create a cross vector anywhere on the planet that you want it makes more sense than have radar dishes radar dishes to look up you're limited by the curvature of the earth if your satellites are looking down to create this you have way more coverage I would argue that that's what they're afraid of is and, and foreign adversaries putting scalar weapons on satellites. But at this point, imagine what's the next step after you go from your satellites. What do you go for after that? After that, you create localized radar dishes like balls of energy that can produce the scalar potentials and just float around freely as well. That's why the MH370 videos are so crazy, because it represents this idea that we've been advancing this technology for decades. And we're already at the point where we can produce balls of energy fields that are anti-gravitational, that can shoot scalar waves from them locally and create such a strong electromagnetic force that they can actually break the Schwinger limit and produce a, a large gravitational wave that can warp a plane. This is the part where I would actually almost begin to agree with the people that say it must be aliens because it's hard to imagine that we've been secretly advancing that much over the decades. But... When you look back at how far back this goes, you realize like, you can go back to the Philadelphia experiment in 1943. So it actually is possible that we've been hiding this technology for like 80 years and advancing it in secret, which again, that brings up its whole, whole another set of tough questions. Like guys, when I said this situation is dark, it's dark. I've been looking into the history, looking into the science, looking into another everything. Another thing you can do is you can produce a field which will cause the electron to interact with it and swirl around in a little swirl. That is technically what we call a magnetic field, a B field. There's one other thing you can do. Suppose you do not move the electron at all, 
but you have a zero vector electromagnetic system. Remember, now I've got to say some extra words. I can't just throw away the zero vector. I've got to go after the gravity that's left when it's there. If I have a zero vector electromagnetic system, it's a stress system, as I show on the bottom diagram. It's suppose all of those vectors are rhythmically varying, like a sine squared or a sine wave. I have then a scalar wave, and all that it does is squeezes the electron. Can we not easily imagine taking a rubber ball between the outstretched fingers of both hands and rhythmically squeezing it and relaxing, squeezing and relaxing? That is a scalar wave. Specifically, it does not translate the particle, neither does it swirl the particle, it merely squeezes it. So it does not give you an electron wiggle. And electron wiggle detectors will not detect ball. it because they detect translation fields, E fields, or swirl fields, B fields. They do not detect squeeze waves. As a matter of fact, that squeeze wave, squeeze wave doesn't do much to the electrons in the shells and orbits around an atom. It goes through and is absorbed and interacts with the nucleus, as we'll see later. So the key here as well, related to the videos, is that they mapped out, uh, I'll, I'll put the videos up to just share for some context when, when necessary. Um, <laughs> if these videos are fake guys, there'd be no way we would have like even a fraction of this information. <laughs> so these waves, one of the first things that Redditors did but back when there was a real investigation on Reddit and it wasn't just a bunch of bullshit back in August, way back in early August, is people were looking into every detail here. And this is why they had to censor the videos because people were figuring it out. And they were figuring out that what we're looking at here is real and there's way too many details. This pattern that's spinning around the plane is a sinusoidal pattern. What did we just hear a second ago? That there's a sinusoidal wave pattern. So sinusoidal pattern is like a perfect wave function that's out there. That's the same pattern that these orbs are doing when they're spinning around. If you graph it, it's a perfect sinusoidal pattern. I posted this on my Twitter. You guys can uh, dig back through it and you can find it. It's also a zero point uh, system, which is your perfect triangle system. I think later on this video, Thomas Bearden talks about it. Um, it's like, guys, if these videos are fake, how come they line up with... To show you that indeed Maxwell... How come they line up with exactly what Thomas Bearden was talking about 38 years ago? Did Thomas Bearden make these videos before he died? Did he fake these videos? I, I might actually believe that. <laughs> okay, uh, 1345. Oh, okay, this is the ether. The ether was a thin material, uh, thin ethereal material in his model. So when he says a stress in the medium, he means a stress in the ether. And he knew about that. And here's a direct quote, which you can read from the chart, directly from Maxwell himself. Here is the finish of the quote, again, directly from James Clerk Maxwell. So Maxwell himself realized that he had also captured the local stress of the medium in his full theory. What is really pathetic is they didn't realize that's what gravity was. So they just didn't realize that gravity was stress in the ether stress in the vacuum pretty crazy so here we see if we read what he says on the screen here maxwell's unified theory quaternions which i don't know what that exactly means exactly yet stress squeeze waves is the idea of scalar waves that can produce gravity heavy sides excision i guess that's his reduction of the equations and i can't read those last two down here um so again what we need to understand this is two things we need to understand that there's an extra dimension and that we need to understand that that extra dimension, the ether, whatever you want to call it, is the underlying framework of our reality, and that that can be tapped into, and that potentially there might be unlimited energy potential in that ether. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, yeah, Einstein might have literally been controlled opposition. People say, Ash, if you look at the non-human intelligence stuff, you might find stuff, maybe. Non-human intelligence stuff just doesn't even surprise me, man. I just assume that there's alien life out there somewhere. doesn't bug me. Uh, what I want is to change the world with technology. That's that's what I want to do. And I want to get the answers for these families because this is some bullshit, man. 
I can't believe we stole a plane and lied about it for uh, over a decade uh, because we were trying to hide the technology that we used. That's that's messed up, man. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts on the high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I find my post about high frequency gravitational wave generator. It's got like a million views. Um, I, I'm one of the people that's been promoting Salvatore Pius more than anyone on this entire planet. He's uh, he came out of like nowhere and interviewed with me first, and I did two interviews with him, and they're pretty huge. And I looked at his patents and all his science. I posted all of them on Twitter before we did our interviews. High frequency gravitational wave generator. If you read it, like you'll see that he's talking about the videos. And these this came out like in 2017, 2018. And he talks about the destructive capability as well. I mean, this is high frequency gravitational wave generator is what we're seeing produce the singularity in the videos. And it's something that could be scaled up that could destroy the entire planet pretty easily, actually. Um, Because the thing that's scary about the videos is the end. So this the scariest part about the videos, guys, is this part right here at the end. The reason why this is scary is you have to understand science to understand why this is so scary. This is scary because what's happening here is the energy is being amplified exponentially. Anytime you have a curve that increases exponentially, that's where the magic starts to happen. That's the same thing that happens with superconductivity. When you start to look at the, the physics equations, when you start to like divide by things and then that's a divide by a variable or uh, square variables, this is where you start to get situations where things exponentially grow. And so in this case, we have a uh, squared, var- squared denominator in a dividing uh, mathematical equation, and that's the distance. And the distance is shrinking. When that number gets smaller and smaller and smaller and closer to zero, the electrical force becomes closer and closer to infinity. Infinity. So this is the part where Coulomb's law explains what we see here. Now, you can imagine scaling up. So the only situation then is that how much energy are these orbs initially starting with? The more energy these orbs start with, the higher your total output's going to go. And you scale that up, now you destroy the planet. This is why they hide the this is why they hide the videos in my opinion. This is why they hide the whole situation. Squeezing. It sits there and it oscillates the energy density of the local vacuum. The gravitational wave is what it is. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't take off at the speed of light. It's sitting in place. It's all locked together as a single system with a zero vector translation or get the hell out of there result. So Einstein then, not knowing any way that you can curve electromagnetic, uh, curve local space-time electromagnetically, and by the way, all curvature space-time means, that's a simple thing. Imagine that space is filled with little fantastically dense and intense spray all the time, called a virtual particle flux. The only problem is each little particle doesn't stay around. It's instantly born, almost instantly dies. So it's like a gas that's continually, each particle being continually created and annihilated. So it's a crazy kind of gas, flux that we're looking at. That's really the modern view of the vacuum. Then all we're talking about is the intensity of that flux is oscillating. That's all we're talking about. Only we polarize the internal pattern of it. We can put patterns in it. That's what the stress wave or the scalar EM wave is. We can put patterns in it. That sounds like sacred geometry to me. Wow. Einstein then said the only other thing left to curve local space-time is this very weak gravitational force, which is some 10 to the minus 42 times weaker or down in the grass from where the force, the electromagnetic force field, the electric field is between two electrons. Now that's very weak. 10 to the minus 42 is a very small fraction. You can't find that. You can't even measure it with, with normal instruments uh, with, except great, with great difficulty. So he reasoned then that that's so far down in the grass, you're never going to be able to measure any kind of local... Okay, so and then so Dalton makes a really great point here about nuclear explosion reaction. Yes, yeah, so a nuclear explosion is also an exponential reaction. So this is brings the idea up that maybe physicists figure this out around the same time as the Manhattan Project. Maybe Oppenheimer knew about the scalar physics as well. Maybe they knew they were going to hide it because of the dangerous potential. They saw how how dangerous just a nuclear weapon would be, and they thought, well, what if we have a cold explosion? That could be even scarier potentially. 
Now let's skip ahead to conservation loss here at about 2145. Curvature space time. And that's the thing, the condition that Oliver Heaviside threw out of James Clerk Maxwell's original theory. He threw out the baby with the bathwater. But he made it a hell of a lot easier to calculate and understand. So people began to understand it, began to be able to calculate, be, began to build instruments and make great advances. But meanwhile, we had a severely crippling assumption made for good reason by Albert Einstein on general relativity. And the uh, I, maybe I skipped over it, but basically there's some part of there where he says there's no conservation laws if you have curvature locally. Um, we probably skipped over it. Let me just see if I, I'll, I'll go back and see if I missed it. Um, the energy is not necessarily pulled into the middle, but it's creating a field around the location of the orbs. And I think when the energy reaches the point where it breaks the Schwinger limit, that's when the singularity is going to be induced. Now, I don't know that for a fact. That's just how I've intuitively understood From general relativity that they teach. In the Western world, you can't get such a paper published in the Western literature. Many good physicists have tried. If you curve local space-time, and this is absolutely rigorous Russian work, check the leading journals and the leading academicians, all, I hope you heard that word, all conservation laws go out the window. There are no irrevocable conservation laws when you have local curvature space-time. And that's the thing, the condition that Oliver Heaviside threw. So that means no conservation of energy, no conservation of momentum. Pretty big. Pretty big. Conservation of momentum is a big one, chat. So this is the part where the scientists were telling us, no, you can warp an object and it can just sit down. You can just be set down somewhere if you want. All the scientists told us that. Um, so this, this is really ground. This part does, I think, Maybe not require new physics, but it requires us to re-understand the physics as we understand, as we currently believe it to be true, uh, which is pretty wild. I, I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that this science is accurate and real, and it will be proven to be real at some point in the future. So if you're somebody out there that thinks that you want to figure out what the next thing is, this is what you want to look into. I think he talks a little bit about the atoms there. We're going to skip ahead to time reversed waves here. So the idea of time reversed waves is very interesting. And I got sent a link, which I'll probably post on the internet sometime soon here, of a video where they take an aquarium or, you know, a tub full of water and you lift the aquarium up and you can see the ripple in the wave. And what happens, like they, they show like there's a, like, let's say a pattern or a, you say like a face, my face, and it disappears when the waves shake. And then what happens? The face comes back. This reminds you of optical phase conjugation. This also is like the definition of a time reversed wave, like that when there's a wave moving forward that creates a pattern, there's a wave going back in time as well. And that if you can get access to that time reverse wave, you can rebuild the thing that you saw before. You can imagine how this could be a type of teleportation or cloaking or moving one object from one location to the other. I think this is the basis for it. the kind of reality you're looking at. Okay, let's talk about the flow of time because we're going to tamper with that too. I told you this part gets a little complicated, but I'm going to try to show you before you get out of here how to think about a time reverse wave and how to use it and how to make it work for you and do magic. Now, a photon comes in and interacts with a negative charge and that and then the charge goes into excited state going around the atom. so real quick i tony nailed it here so we are like fish that don't realize we're in the water we don't realize that there's an under that we are in a fish bowl it's not just space that's out there there's a whole nother layer that we don't perceive that's what we don't understand and it's like if we were to jump out of the water and realize oh no there's a whole nother element going on here that we don't quite understand that will bring us to the next level Three points. Um, elections reform. Just watch the videos. This is called Scalar Physics or Thomas Bearden Psychotronics. You can. He's got four or five videos out there. You can watch my streams. You don't need to believe anything I'm saying. I'm simply... This guy is an engineer that worked with the government 
uh, on special access programs. He's seen the stuff experimentally in the lab. He died two years ago. He's talking about this stuff in 1985. I have other people that I've gone on the record. Uh, my buddy Dave Rossi, I believe, on the Tim Pool podcast, uh, Culture Wars podcast. I brought him with me. He says he's seen stuff like this uh, on the record. Um, he said he's seen stuff like this in the labs as well. So you don't have to believe me. The science, I think, will check out if we were able to conduct an experiment and potentially pr uh, produce a gravitational wave, a squeeze in the ether. And then drops back and decays and emits a photon. That process of photon absorption and emission, re-emission, from the excited state of a negative charge in an atom is what we call the positive flow of time. Now let's be rigorous here. We're saying that the flow of time in this universe occurs bit by bit at a fantastically high rate, one near piece at a time. Delta T is not always the same size. It is discrete, but it is not the same size. So watch your words. You've got to think very carefully. Chronons do not exist, not as being one simple value. It's discrete, but it's quite variable, as we'll find later. If that same photon interacts with a positive charge, we already know in physics that if you invert the charge, you invert time. That may surprise you, but it's well known in physics. That is not Tom Bearden. And so it gives you a little piece of negative time. Hey, wait a minute. We've got a problem here. They use a theorem in particle physics. They found out that charge is not conserved, broken symmetry. Parity is not conserved. Time itself is not conserved. But it seems that the three, the product of the three, all three, cannot be violated at one time. That's the best shot we got at it today in particle physics. That's where they're at. But you can violate any two or one. Let me say that again. You don't have to conserve charge. The contrary argument is, but it's a little effect. You say, yeah, baby, it's a little white crow, but maybe he'll grow. If I can have little white crows and I can collect them and grow them, I'll have big white crows in the macro world. So one thing I want to point out here is that the reason why this was probably completely misunderstood at the time is that we did not understand time dilation. At least I had no idea what the hell time dilation was until I saw the movie Interstellar. When you realize that time is not constant, then you can begin to understand why delta T there matters. Because time is also, think of it like a wave where time can go like this, super short wavelength, or it can be a long wavelength. This is why you can have different respective flows of time regarding depending on how much mass you're next to in general. And like uh, some a quick questions that were in the chat. Uh, no, my parents um, also, you know, they are cordial with me about this, but they don't like believe any a lot of this stuff or, you know, aliens or any of that stuff. I think it just goes to show like how far beyond the paradigm some of this stuff is. Um and like somebody else said, yeah, this isn't the kind of stuff where so, like I can give you the answers. I can tell you that there's an extra dimension and I can tell you that there's an ether and that I can tell you that we can produce over unity and free energy from that ether based on this physics. But I can't make you believe it or understand it. That's that's the hard part. That's what makes it so easy to hide is that a lot of people just want a TikTok video that tells them what's real and what's not. But if you really want to understand it and know that it's real, you have to look into the science yourself. That's the hard truth. So charge parity time, if you inverse the thing, you might get something different. Well, as a matter of fact, the antiphoton, which has been assumed to be the same as a photon, that is a false assumption in physics. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Well, we've already said we go into the nucleus with scalar waves, and we'll have a higher order reality when we do that. Why? First place, we're interacting with a negative, uh, positive charge. The yeah, so this is a good comment by Anthony Williams as well. Time reverse wave isn't a reverse wave back in time. It's a mirror image of the waveform played end to start instead of start to end. It's funny because I asked Dave Rossi about this, and he actually said, no, it's actually literally going back in time. I don't know. I think that's where he and I might differ, but that's the part where I, I'm not sure at the moment. Um nucleus of an atom is already time inverted. Did they forget to tell you that in your electrical class? Yeah, because they didn't know that. But it's true, and modern physics substantiates it. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead a part of some of this. 
Um, you, and you guys can watch it on your own if you want. I'm going to go to 3125, any kind of zero point system. Oh, this part right here. And actually adjust the potential. We can even put patterns. Remember, we put fingers, structure inside this scalar wave. It's got a structure. We can build any kind of zero system, different systems and patterns and polarizations inside there in the virtual state of vacuum that we wish to. We you guys see, you catch that? So the different types of zero point systems. The potential. We can even put patterns. Remember, we put fingers, structure inside this scalar wave. It's got a structure. We can build any kind of zero system. Booyah! There it is. That's the Yahtzee moment. The scalar wave, we can produce any kind of zero point system from the scalar wave. It doesn't have to be just like this to cancel out the waves. It can be a triangle. Where do you see the triangle, chat? Where do you see the triangle? This is the proof that we need. For the people that have been following along, this is your proof that the MH370 videos are real. This is it. For the people that want to see it in the chat, I don't have access to special access programs with the government. I do have access to two videos that got leaked to the internet. We are seeing exactly what Thomas Bearden is theoretically uh, was theorizing in 1985. There is your zero point system. You are staring right at it. Remember the orbs. What do the orbs do? Watch them spinning around the plane. What the hell? Oh, that was just the beginning. I was oh crap. I was like, what just happened there? Um, that was the short one. Okay, sorry. Here we go. So they spin around the plane, and then watch what they do here. They're mapping the plane. You can tell they're mapping the plane because they're they're spinning around it all ways, and we've mapped it out, and it's a sphere. Now watch the orbs change their orientation. Look at them change the orientation. Now they're vertical. Why are they vertical? They're vertical because they're preparing to collapse onto the plane and induce the singularity right here. At this point, they're slowing down. They're changing their orientation right here. And then they're going to collapse on the plane. And then the plane's going to go poof. You can actually see them collapse on the plane, I think, in the frame right before that right here. So... This is the zero point system. This is the scalar uh, wave form, front, whatever you want to call it, that's being produced in order to create this. Pretty wild. Uh, let's switch over. Different systems and patterns and polarizations inside there in the virtual state of vacuum that we wish to. We can go into that nucleus and it's boiling away. It's just like a cathode. Yeah. Who disappeared? I mean, 370 is the easiest answer in the world. The people filming it. United States government. You can tell it's an operation from the drone video. The drone is super close to the plane. They're filming the plane before the orbs appear. The government's the U.S. government's the one who did it. They're zooming in on it like they know what's about to happen. They're trying to get the best intelligence of the orbs possible. Either if you believe that aliens are causing the orbs or whatever in the MH370 videos, then maybe there's a scenario where the government's working with the aliens. I don't know. All I know is the people that are filming that are implicated in the disappearance and then we see the plane get disappeared by some crazy ass floaty orbs. So to me, that's the U.S. government is the ones responsible. Oh, in terms of retiring, well, the um, what happened with the retirement thing? I'm not going to go into this too long, but the redacted interview was probably the best interview I've ever had to date. It's had across all the social medias, probably close to a half a million views, um, tons and tons of views, tons of positive reception. And then this brought the debunkers back out. The debunkers come back out and start attacking the videos. I'm going to push back super hard again. I always said I wanted to look into the science. That's what I want to do. But when people start pushing on the videos, blah, 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 they're going to get pushed back on it. So technically, I'm not really investigating more, but there's been a lot of people that have been commenting saying, well, I'm even finding more and more details in the videos. So you know what? If the debunkers want to keep trying to go ahead and prove that they're fake, even though they've already been convinced, supposedly, then I'll find even more details. We are we will. I mean, 370X will find more details. I'll publish them and we'll show people how real these videos really are. Now, what really was impetuous is that I figured out how the science worked from watching these videos of, of Thomas Bearden of scalar physics. And I realized that what we were dealing with here was a mixed wave interferometry system. You've got your three orbs like this and then you've got your fourth orb. So you've got your three orbs in your triangle. You've got your fourth orb over here. And this is what's creating our slingshot effect that we see when the, the singularity gets induced. And then poof, the plane goes over here or the other way, I guess, this way, however you want to think of it.
And that's exactly how mixed wave interferometry works. Mixed wave interferometry can work with any type of wave, including gravity waves. Okay, let's switch ahead. I don't want to be up all night, 37 minutes. Do anti-gravity. You got right. to... I think he just said how to do anti-gravity. It fits exactly with it spatially, but the time dimension is reversed. Now the stress of those two waves that they're locked together is totally on time dimension. That's a highly compacted space dimension. And you get one going up, one coming back, so you get a C squared type factor out of this thing. That gravitational wave, and that's what it is, that scalar wave can be up to nine times 10 to the 16th times as strong as the one I've told you about in the past. And this is the one you do if you want to do any gravity. Hmm. You got your ears open? You listening? All you have to do to do any gravity, all you want in any university laboratory in this country is make a pumped phase conjugate mirror at 100 to 400 hertz. Let me say that again, and I'm not going to answer any questions on it. All you have to do, if you want to make all the anti-gravity you wish to make, and any university laboratory in this country can do it, it's simple, it doesn't take much power, is make a pumped phase conjugate mirror between 100 and 400 hertz. Well, there we go. There you go. There's your secret anti-gravity. I asked... Um some of my people about that and they said that that is one way but there's another way that's similar i think with i think it's higher frequency i can't remember if it's high i think it's higher frequency i'll, I'll double check for the next time um but and then he may have been being deceptive there because he didn't want to give away the full secrets of like the powerful anti-gravity but i think he's leading us down the right path there with the pump phase conjugate mirror with 100 to 400 hertz um so there's your answer on that one. Pretty crazy. He talks about the Philadelphia experiment. This this clip, remember he talks about Philadelphia experiment here? And then sit on the side laughing for the next two, three hours. And how silly we all been for years. And how easy it is to do it. I will tell you. Real quick. Um, this stream will be available later on YouTube and on X. If you pursue that, you can take a flashlight battery and levitate a battleship. And I will not discuss that further. Because then you're going to ask me about the Philadelphia experiment, and I'm going to tell you I don't know anything about that. <laughs> once in a while, you got to lie a little bit. Every once in a while, you got to lie a little bit. Pretty weird. Um, let's see. Let's go to block the electromagnetic field in the Faraday cage. I've got to clip some of this. This is 42 this is wild. It gets out as gravitational acts and penetrates the point. But if you could block that arrow on the left and force a lot more of it to go over there into the actual three space that's in our 4D Minkowski space, then you'd get lots more gravity, lots more inertial field. That's all you got to do to build an inertial field generator. But you got to block the EM field. How are you going to do that? Well, you do it real simple. Normally, it goes boom out there as electromagnetics, not much left as gravity, a little bitty tiny hiss over on the side to make it kitty cartoon, but impress the point. But if you block the escape as electromagnetics, block the big door, you'll get a big boom out over there, and you'll get lots of inertia and lots of gravity, and you can engineer that on the bench at will. Huh. The great cosmic engines of the universe operate inside vector, electromagnetic vector zeros. That's where the gravitation is. Gravitation. So basically he's saying, make a door, make a Faraday cage that blocks out all the electromagnetic fields. And then you can produce gravity inside that and potentially create, you know, like an explosion. You maybe can control the force of it from that. Pretty interesting stuff it's there. Unfolded electromagnetic forces locked together with a zero E field and B field resultants. Electromagnetics is the outfolding of the locked in electromagnetic stress of the vacuum. That's all it is. And by the way, that's rigorously in agreement with modern physics, except we can have a structure to it, whereas they normally have it as a random structure. They don't use the fact that you can deliberately do it, because why? Heaviside taught them to throw away the zero electromagnetic vector resultant, because he had thrown away the gravity with that system. Okay. 
to get distance effects, we all know how to put photons through there and hit something out there at a the distance or hit it with matter. But the best way to do it is to do it with potentials, not with force fields and photons and matter. And that's potentials. Potentials were thought to be mathematical figments until quantum mechanics proved they are the real things and it's the electromagnetics that's a derivative. Okay, guys, it's about to get spicy. Make sure you're listening. Um, so we're now going to start talking about shooting these scalar potentials to a distance and then interferometry. Interferometry is another word you definitely got to understand if you want to understand how this all plays out. I will be looking into Al Bialik on the Philadelphia Experiment. I've already listened to one of his interviews for like an hour. I, he was extremely convincing. I, I thought he was really convincing. I did talk to Tim Ventura about it, who talked to Al Bialik several times. Uh, he and I may have a debate about the Philadelphia Experiment in the future. I'd love to talk to Tim Ventura about it. Tim Ventura also um, talked to uh, Thomas Bearden as well. And interference is what gives you everything in the potentials. That's the magic. First, you got to make potentials. If you make these, the zero vector electromagnetic systems are artificial potentials. They have an internal structure of stress, but they have no gradient. They're not flowing out with a translation vector or a swirl vector. If you interfere two of those at a distance, you recreate electromagnetic energy. Depending on how you bias the beams, you create the thing higher than the normal energy, so energy flows out of that interference zone. If you bias it lower, it'll create energy lower, so it'll suck energy out of there. And by the way, it'll come right back down the beams, back in your transmitter. You better dump it somewhere. Suck energy out of there. You know what another word for sucking energy out of a location is? Endothermic event. What would an endothermic event look like, chat? Well, like that. But let's look at some characteristics now of time-reversed waves, because here's where the real magic is. This is the magic we've been looking for. We'll go at it first like the nonlinear optics boys. If you have a piece of you plastic that's nonlinear, hunk of junk, 10 cent piece, and coming in from the left over here is the dotted line, a wave front that I show as E1. It comes in and it strikes this nonlinear medium and it travels on through it and it starts break, getting distorted as it goes through. The wave, wave front starts getting distorted because it's a nonlinear distorting medium. It comes out the other side and you see it's now all wiggly and distorted. But another magic thing happens, which we didn't know. We had to discover it from the open Soviet literature and then they had to kick us in the ankles to get our attention to make us realize what they'd said. Then we went to work on it. The medium also generates a second wave that's a time-reversed wave, E2, that now appears spatially in phase everywhere that other wave appears, forward, backwards, everywhere else. It's normally a very weak thing. We'll find out you can amplify it real easy. But it is totally and exactly and precisely in phase. It has an invisible trace of where this other wave came from and where it's going, and it boogies out of there to appear right in that exact same place in space. But in time, it's reversed. It's a stress in time. The two together will form a real good gravitational wave if they're equal, spatially. The producer gravitational wave if they're equal. Um, you can block an EM field with a superconductor. That seems to be the answer, right? The whole point of the superconductors, remember the quantum locking? This is where we're looking at anti-gravity when we look at the quantum locking, when we're looking at flux pinning. We're technically looking at, we might be technically looking at anti-gravity there. Is that, I mean, this that is the secret. I, I think I was on it, even going back to the beginning of this. Like, I didn't even understand how any of this worked, and I had correctly deduced what was going on here. So, remember again, what this is what we're looking at here. We're looking at a form of anti-gravity. The magnetic waves from the the magnetic field from the magnet is bending around the object instead of going through it. It's bending around it. Now, what is that doing? It's making the electromagnetic the, the potential locally of the object, the magnetic potential and the uh, electromagnetic electric potential go to zero. At least the magnetic one. This seem this could be the answer here. So this could be why superconductors are the secret to anti gravity or a secret to anti-gravity. And look at this. Look at this video, man. The this, the magnets to the right. Shouldn't this object fall to the ground? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It just stays there stuck in superposition. 
Crazy, and optics man. because they're at the wrong frequency. They never see the gravity aspects. They don't have it in optics. This is a quote right out of a standard textbook that says the same thing the diagram said, and I won't bother to let you read the thing. It's, it says exactly the same, only very technical. Okay, let's amplify the thing. We take our same piece of uh, plastic material, hunk of junk. We'll put so, and, and real quick, so somebody asked, where's the fourth or The fourth orb could be anywhere. I would deduce, based on watching the videos, that the fourth orb is going to be perpendicular to the orientation of the three orbs. The three orbs are spinning around the plane vertically, perfect vertical for, uh, look, formation. My guess would be that the fourth orb is perpendicular to that, which if you actually go backwards, based on the coordinates, we can see that the plane's going to the east. Backwards is to the west, which would be over by the Maldives. That's where the plane was seen a few hours later. Now, he's explaining here mixed wave interferometry. The pump waves are going to be the ones that are creating the zero point vector. That's going to be our three orbs that are converging. And the reason why is the three orbs are a perfect equilateral triangle. Then when all three waves hit, the sum is zero. Put in a wave A2 and a wave A1. Normal, nice garden variety electromagnetic waves. Nice little sine wave. Let's play like. But we put them in so they're in the medium at 180 degrees. That sounded like that RAM material, didn't it? Only now I'm working at optics. Just wanted to point it out in passing. And so now in the medium, what do we have? It, is it not a nonlinear medium? All you electrical engineers, is that not a modulator? Let's hear it. Yes. It locks the two waves together. They don't just mix and run through one another. They become one system. You've got to have a zero vector locked in modulated system, not mixed waves. Mixing don't do it. It's got to be modulated. It's got to be a nonlinear medium. Okay, waves A1 and A2 spatially 180 out of phase now, do they not lock together and form a zero vector resultant, E field and B field? Yes, they do. Is that not a scale wave? Now, you can argue a little bit if you want to about what happens to the magnetic field. If that bothers you, so it's going to shift 90 degrees, forget it. Just stay with the E field. The point is you can make a scalar wave, and it will go now into the nucleus, and they call the combination of those two waves the pump wave. And what are you pumping? The nuclei of the atoms in the material. What are you doing to the nuclei of the atoms in the material? You're charging them up to a higher or lower potential, an excited state as the case may be. Doesn't matter. And here you go. Charging the atoms and up. And then suppose you come in here with a little old weak A4 wave. These are the numbers that they use. A1 and A2 is a pump, A4 is the input. This thing operates like a triode. So A4 is the input. So we have one more wave in ours. So in ours, we have a triangle formation, and then we have our input wave. So the triangle formation is our pump waves. That's our orbs. And then we have one more orb. This is why Dave Rossi speculated a fourth orb. And that fourth orb is shooting a beam into the interferometry zone, which is being created by our three orbs. And what's going to happen? We're going to get an exactly time reverse deflection shot back out. That's where the plane's going. A1 and A2, the pump wave, makes the nucleus a cathode. A3 go, uh, go, A4 goes in on the grid. A3 comes out as if it were a signal coming off the plate. And you can have all the energy in A3 that you up to what you've got in A1 and A2. And A3 is time reversed, which means what? It means wherever A4 came from in the universe, out there from some distant point, this thing has a memory. And it takes off, boogieing through space, precisely fitting the path that A4 took all the way back to that point. Be it six feet in the laboratory, be it 6,000 miles away, or 600,000 miles in the perfect case. If that's an over the horizon radar, signal A3 boogies back up to where it bounced off the ionosphere, boogies on back over to where we tracked a rising rocket. So he just explained that it doesn't matter how far away it is. He just explained that you're going to have a time reverse wave that's going to slingshot the object based on where the fourth orb shoots the beam at. It's going to slingshot back to the location of the fourth orb. He also said the words over the horizon radar in 1985. So if people out there don't think we have over the horizon radar, they are completely delusional. Because this man was talking about 1985. That was 38 years ago, 39 years ago. Um, let's go ahead and skip ahead. Not being able to go to the past. 
universal. We prefer to say you can't go backwards in time. You can't go into the past. Immediately he reveals his ignorance. Let's reason together. I said this wave was time reversed. Did I say that every single particle of mass in the whole cotton-picking universe was time reversed and backed up to a previous state of the universe, which is what the past would be? Nobody said any such thing. The theory doesn't predict any such thing. Interesting. And if he thinks that's what I'm saying, he doesn't understand time reversal, and he doesn't understand quantum mechanics, and he doesn't understand physics, and he's put a label around his own neck and on his own forehead. Not me. He has done it. So that's pretty important. Yes, first of all, I'm not suicidal. Second of all, this is the reason why it's not time travel. Because yes, we can create a, a gravitational wave. Yes, we can create a time reversed wave locally, but that's not going to reverse all of the superposition of every other atom and location outside of that localized zone. So imagine that we're reversing the time on this on the, the plane itself. So the plane itself is going to reverse flow back in time, but the outside world's time is still static, still moving forward. This is why time dilation comes into play, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so superconductors reverse and reflect magnetism. This is why that's so important. We, we've kind of figured that out. That's why, honestly, guys, you got to listen to this several times to really wrap your brain around it. It's just it's so deep and rich in, in science and terminology. Oh, and let's. So now you guys want to see how um, phase conjugate mirrors work? Here we go. You stand there and look in the mirror, and you're quite happy with that. Let's look at a phase conjugate mirror. The light from the source, which may be the toe of your shoe, scatters across the surface of the mirror. From every point on the surface of the mirror, it reflects right back to the original point. Boogity boogity. It crawfishes backward. Boogity 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 right. So this is super weird. Normal wave is going to bounce at an angle. But uh, in a, fa a phase conjugate mirror, the wave perfectly bounces back from every single point. And this is weird because what he's going to say here is if you were to look at a phase conjugate mirror, you wouldn't see your toes or whatever at an angle. You're just going to see your eyes. That's <laughs> pretty creepy. Back to the point. What could you see if you looked in such a mirror? Could you see your toe? All that light goes back to your toe. Could you see your knee? The only thing you could see would be the two black retinas of your eyes. Nothing else. It's two a black retinas of your eyes. Breed of cat. This is out of the standard literature by Pepper. That's not Tom Beard. This already seems like magic. This seems like magic to me already. The idea that if you were to look into a phase conjugate mirror, and you're only going to see the black of your eyes. That's it. That's bizarre. But this also enables the ability for scalar waves because... What you're doing here is no matter the angle you're shooting it at, you're always going to get back a time reverse wave that's going to be an exact uh, reflection. And this is also how you can now begin to see why this is going to be useful in radar. Because this is how radar works. You shoot radar something at something and you need it to bounce back to you. And this is how you can figure out where an object is. That's the whole point of radar. This is why radar gets turned into a weapon. The very same technology that we use for distance tracking on objects is the exact same technology that can produce a scalar potential, which can then be used with interferometry to create an explosion or an absorption of energy at a distance. There you go. It's a quite different breed of cat from an ordinary EM wave, and you must understand that. It does not behave the same. And I want to quote Pepper on something else, because I want to point out to you there's a whole new physics here. There's a whole new world. Pepper said... The real and the major discoveries in phase conjugation and time reverse waves are yet to be made. So have at it, young fellow. There's a hundred Nobel Prizes waiting on you. Anti-gravity, free energy, violation of all the conservation laws, control of it, overcoming space-time, moving in hyperdimensions, materialization, dematerialization, transmutation of elements, reversal of disease, reversal of aging. You name it, it's there. Whoa, that's a lot. Free energy, cold fusion, reversing of age, reversing of, uh, you know, um, diseases, uh, the ability to, you know, warp an object. Like, what, what more do you want here? He's explaining all the science that we had already independently concluded was possible before we ever watched this. This is Thomas Beard in Psychotronics, 1985. You guys can Google it. You can watch it yourself. Absolutely recommend it. Uh, is it possible for the government to edit the videos? Absolutely. I mean, if you can teleport an object, of course, you could edit some videos. There's just no point. 
there's no story of the government editing these videos that makes any sense. I know there's a lot of people out there that just think that magic like this can't be possible no matter what. And people are willing to believe any other answer that anyone were to give them. And I, I personally believe that the government's next move would be to create, make a version of these videos, which they could do since they have the originals, that don't have the orbs and the zap in them, and then admit that they tracked the plane. That's the only way they're getting out of this. Just based on the body of evidence, I'm being honest with you guys, I'm being honest with the government if they're listening right now. The only way they're getting out of this with this information not leaking out and this science not leaking out is if they fabricate a fake version of the videos without the orbs, without the plane in them or without the, the zap in them and then and admit that they tracked the plane and then come up with some story about why they didn't want to tell anybody about how they know where the plane went and then somehow tell us where the plane is exactly. Because if they tracked it, they should know exactly where it crashed where we never found anything. Because otherwise, the only answer is those videos. I mean, there just is no answer for why those videos would be fake. Uh, people say, well, they're trying to do Project Bluebeam. It, the simpler answer is you don't make the videos at all. <laughs> right, guys? Like, just think about it logically. If I don't want people... Uh, like, they've never promoted these videos. They've been hiding them for 10 years. They're, if they were trying to do it to convince people aliens are real, they would have leaked them in 2014. They wouldn't have put a guy in prison over leaking them. They wouldn't be fighting against me and putting all their debunkers and having the media ignore me. None of the stuff makes any sense. So I am happy for the government to say whatever they want, but I've got a body of evidence that's so strong that I'm going to be able to tell if they're lying, no matter what claim they make. Um, but at this point, people are so unwilling to believe just the reality right in front of them because it's so far beyond the paradigm that I'd even be happy for the government just to come out and admit that, yeah, we were tracking the plane and make their fake video with no orbs and no zap in it. I mean, I already know it's real because I've talked to real scientists who've told me it's real. And I'm listening to a guy in 1985 explain it in vast amounts of detail. Uh, but if the world doesn't want to know about it, fine, whatever. I guess I'll just collect all these Nobel Prizes and, and come up with myself. The absolute control of physical reality. You can go into the Schrodinger equation. You can change the probabilities before they even occur and determine whether they shall emerge as physical reality or not. I mean, whoa, man. He just said we can control physical reality and we can change the Schrodinger equation and whether or not it emerges or not. He's talking about the double slit experiment, rebuilding the wave function. Again, these are all things that I had deduced just from watching the videos as a guy that knew nothing about the science back in August. This is the reason why the scientists and engineers wanted to talk to me. They realize this guy intuitively gets it without even knowing the science. And it's almost like they could tell that people were starting to wake up because that there's enough stuff out there where a random guy like me can already look at those videos and go, wait a minute, these are real. These are consistent with science. And that's how we wake people up. That's how this stuff gets out there. That's why I think that the government and the UFO community, a lot of the people in the UFO community, they're these pro-disclosure types. They are on a timeline. They're trying to raise the collective conscious of people slowly. But what happens when you do that? Some people figure it out quicker than others. And some of those people that figure it out quicker are the people like me and you guys out there. They're going, wait a minute, shit, this is real. Here it is. We've got videos proving it. Like these videos, this is what catastrophic disclosure is, is that their timeline is thrown out the window. Because now there's rogue people going out there going, this is real. This is how it works. This is exactly how the science works. It's been out there for 20 years. Here you go. You can test it. There's papers on it. There's patents on it. You know, that blows all the timelines up. This is why the UFO disclosure people hate me, in my opinion, because they had a plan. They had a timeline and those plans are getting thrown right out the window. The world is your apple. For God's sakes, get in there and work. OK, now let's skip ahead. Finish this thing off. Only a couple more uh, sequences, scalar beams and radar. And they can do it at three feet in the laboratory. I can do it at 15,000 miles in the field with the radar. And it's so hard to build a scalar radar that it just takes a plumbing section and a waveguide and a switch to throw. And you get a scalar beam, not a normal beam. And if you interfere that two scalar beams and you're responding, you create a time reverse wave in each beam from two radars in response to some signal either passively received or reflected like from an over the horizon radar from a distant target you can put a six inch or a three inch ball of light inside that target at 15,000 miles. In the latter part of November, a shuttle launch at night was the third shuttle they tested these weapons against. 
There is the strike of such an electromagnetic missile, which I published. So he basically says that the Challenger was taken down by one of these. And he basically says that they can make a six inch. So basically he's showing how pinpoint the accuracy would be. If you shoot two of these waves that they could have created a six inch wide singularity, essentially uh, using this. It's not really a singularity, I suppose, but I guess maybe it is. Um, and that's what he's saying right there. So this also helps explain why they have the orbs is they need to make a singularity big enough to contain the entire plane so that the whole plane gets sucked away. Otherwise, what happens? Half the plane gets sucked away. The other plane is going to rip in shreds in half. So those orbs are absolutely mapping the plane to figure out exactly how big they need to have the singularity get produced. Now, duh, 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 hydrogen cyanide. Okay, so this next part is crazy too. So he talks about this using this on a plane. I think it's a JAL, Japanese Airlines plane. And that was seen the three eyewitnesses. The interference would have been interfering with the combustion, and one eyewitness that had passed directly over his head said the engines were laboring. They did not develop full power. Everybody knows it was ice. It's been validated that they checked the ice on top of the wing, got back in the airplane, pulled it out. That's false. And here's a clincher. If the plastics were on fire, the plastics out gas. One of the products from those kinds of plastics is hydrogen cyanide. And the people in that part of the plane would have had to breathe hydrogen cyanide and die before the airplane sunk to the ground and crashed. Now here's what the U.S. government and the Canadian government have withheld from you, and they withheld from the board doing the investigation, which is a legal offense. So this is the part, chat, where I started to realize those people on board that plane were dead. Uh, not just the lithium-ion batteries, but if this, if they used a scalar weapon to ignite the batteries at a distance, like radars or lasers from space or whatever, or scalar beams from space, then they might have also uh, lit up some of the plastics, and the plastics could have been releasing toxic fumes as well. And those masks on board those planes only last like 20 minutes. This plane was going to get overcome by toxic smoke quickly. So some people might have survived, like you stay low and you avoid this fumes above you, but I don't think everybody survived this. And once you have people dying from this, now you're talking liability and criminal legal liability that people go to prison. You know, that's that's the truth of MH370. That's why they can't let it come out ever, potentially. Now, we would never figure it out without these videos, no doubt. Um, but there you go. Now, 125 is the last bit. Uh, Ashton, can you show the blue video of the orb swirling the plane and highlight the shape of the black lines? Yeah, I'll show that in a second. You can't really see them converge, but you can see the orbs reorient. I have another version of the video that I'm going to post as well tomorrow. Um, so here he talks about how to Time manipulate flow. energy, normal, low positive energy. Gravity is the normal kind, which means attraction to mass and entropy is the tendency to more and more disorder. That's normal physics normal reality but when you use time reversal if you reverse the rule is this if you reverse one of those things you reverse all of them all the rest now you so this is where like i think that you can polarize to either create the infolding or outfolding so the thing about the alcubarre drive chat is that you either expand space in front of you or you contract space so this would be like the infolding would be uh, contracting space and the outfolding would be expanding space. So it has to do with, I think, the different polarization of the charge. I'm not 100% sure on this, but that's my current understanding. I'm getting a little bit better with it uh, in terms of how you can manipulate one way or another. And this is also how you can either have your endothermic event or your exothermic event as well, I believe. You can do and gravity, you can do entropy, and you can do negative energy. If you short out a massive amount of negative energy in the laboratory, you get a brilliant flash that'll buy on you for a couple of days, and the thing will freeze ice around it. It doesn't. You just hear that? You have a massive flash that will blind you for days. That's the flash we see in the MH370 video. There may have been ice formed around that object that was super cold as well. It may have frozen the water in the atmosphere. That might be what the hole that we saw in the satellite video was. We might have seen ice get shot through the cloud, a tiny amount of ice. That's why we see this little pin hole show up in the cloud in the satellite video. Heat cools. Okay. Priori lab, I want to tell you about. Okay, so we're going to 
end there. I'm going to show a couple of videos now that we've got some context for the videos. Thank you guys for watching that with me. Hi, this was the best interview by far with um uh sorry, Thomas Bearden. So if you want to watch the Thomas Bearden thing, highly recommend checking that out. I'm going to show first this video clip here. This is the one where somebody changed the color channels on the drone video. And the whole point of changing them was so that you could see the dark lines better. Otherwise, it's the same exact video. You can also see the detail in the clouds a little better, where you can see clearly these are 3D clouds. These are not a 2D picture. I can't believe those morons of the Corridor crew. These guys are the dumbest fuckers on the whole planet. Like, how can they pretend to be VFX artists so they can't even tell they're looking at a real video here? And they can't even tell they're looking at a 3D video. They literally went on a channel with millions of followers and lied to their followers and said that they're looking at 2D static cloud background here, which they're not. They're obviously not. You can tell they're not when the drone zooms in and proves that they're not. As if Honestly, anyone who follows the Corridor crew, do yourself a favor, unfollow them. They're some of the dumbest people on the face of the earth. They were objectively wrong about every single thing they said about these videos. To me, that proves they're not VFX experts at all. Um, complete losers. Now, the part with the drones here, though, this is where you can see the lines in front of the orbs here in just a second. Like now you can clearly see the line in front of the orbs very clearly here. And keep in mind, they're spinning in like multiple axes at once here. But in certain frames, you can see it very clearly right here. You can very clearly see the line in front of the orb down here. You can see the line in front of the orb. And then this one right here, you can see the line in front of the orbs here. These lines are in front of the orbs. They're expanding space in front of them, creating a gravity well. That's why it's super cold. At least that's my best understanding right now. I mean, look at that. Holy crap, look at that. Look at this. Look at these lines in front of the orbs. See this line in front of the orb here as well? They're creating a localized gravity well right in front of them. Nobody has ever seen anything like this in the history of man before these videos. Not even any sci-fi show saw anything like this. There is nothing like this anywhere. No reference for this. Nobody could have even made this up. That's the crazy part. This is high frequency gravitational wave generator. I think we're looking at that by Salvatore Pies right there. And then let's look at the last second here as well. I just want to see. Dude. You can see the line still in front of the orbs. Like even in this frame, like here, you can still see the line in front of the orbs. Although you can kind of see the line like right down here now. Poof. And then what was the other thing I was going to show? Um, oh, yeah, the cold event. So, okay, I want to show you guys this as well. I think you should be able to see it. So let's see if we can see it in the high quality. So right, right where my mouse is right here. If you guys can see that near the middle of the screen right here. A little hole is going to appear in this cloud right here after the zap. So you can see it looks pretty closed off, that, that cloud right there. And then you see this little hole right here where my mouse is. This hole just uh, forms right there, like right after the zap. You go back, there's no hole there right there. There's no hole there. Go back before the plane goes over it. There's no hole right here. And then you kind of see this hole begin to form a little bit right here. That might be ice shooting out of the zap. So if this zap is super cold here, this might actually be creating ice. That might be what we see here is ice shooting out from the zap. And then it punctures through one of the clouds. That might be what it is. This zap is illuminating is what Thomas Bearden just said regarding a negative entropy type of, or negative energy type event um, happening. It's going to create a big zap illumination. I mean, he just explained the videos, so. Thanks, guys. Let's see uh, any questions we got going on. Um, so a lot of people think that there's aliens, that we can fly to other star systems. I mean, with this kind of technology, we could. To me, the bigger issue isn't that we can get to Mars. The bigger question is, what do you do when you get to Mars? you got to have some type of way to live there. you got to have some kind of base or something in order to be able to set up camp there when you zap yourself over to Mars because you still need to breathe, breathe oxygen. Um, so I think those are the bigger limitations here to me, 
as much as this technology seems like magic, a lot of people, they can't even believe it's real because it's so far beyond the paradigm. To me, this is just the starting point. To me, this technology gets just magnitudes crazier as you miniaturize it, as you find ways to optimize it. it you know, We go from a situation where we have radars on the ground, where we create interferometry from the ground. Then we go to satellites in the air, where we create interferometry from the satellites. And then we go to having orbs that we can create interferometry locally through gravity manipulation, and they can also defy gravity just themselves. And then from there, you miniaturize it even further down, and now you create like a portable teleportation system or like a stargate that you can just walk through. Um, and then it only gets crazier from there as well, honestly. So that's the part where I think is really interesting. Um, any other questions? Hey, Money Penny, I nice see you. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that this event is... You, you don't do this to a plane because you want some cargo. You just steal the cargo if you want to do that. You don't zap the plane. To me, this has to be about intellectual property. It's not about secret gold on the plane or microchips or anything else that's on the plane. This is about the people that are on the plane. That's, in my opinion, the only reason why you do this, no matter what the scenario is. That's just my opinion. Um, and yes, you can adjust the frequency either construct or destruct. So I think this is probably also how you could argue whether or not it's an uh, endothermic or exothermic event. I think it has to do with the polarization. It says negative entropy is the default. Um, but yeah, so now, as, as Tammy says, now you can understand how this is real and exactly what the science is behind it that makes it real. Whether or not we fully understand that science right now, I've only been looking at this science for like six months. Six months. There's people that spend their whole lives looking into this science and stuff like this and, and being physicists and engineers and what have you. So I think it's pretty incredible that we've come this far in just six months. Um, and I will go ahead and link that lecture for you guys. Psychotronics. This is the one I think. So you guys can also do this, man. If, if you're out there and you're thinking, I can't learn this, you can. If I can learn it, you guys can learn it, right? I mean, I, I'm definitely not the smartest guy in the world. I think I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm smart enough, but like, you know, you just you just keep watching it over and over and it'll start to sink in. And then look up the terms, any term you don't understand. Like I'm looking up cathode later today. I mean, it may seem stupid, but sure. Don't be embarrassed. Just look up any terms you don't understand and keep watching the videos until it starts to make sense. Um, the, the beauty of these videos is that this is like having the answers to the teacher's test about what's possible. Once you figure out what's possible, the question is, how do you reverse engineer it to figure out how it works? That's exactly what we've been doing for six months. Imagine where we'll be six months from now. I might be giving lectures about scalar physics. Now, the other thing I want to say as well is tomorrow I will be uh, talking with, uh, Tom Montauk and, uh, we're going to we're going to delve into a little bit of esoteric conversation. But the main thing I want to talk to him about is scalar physics, what he knows about scalar physics, how he thinks it works, etc. Because I just want to learn more. Uh, I think that's going to be really awesome. He seems like a really smart guy. Uh, and then we'll see. Let's see. What direction do the beams point? Not sure on that one. You guys can take a look at that. I'm, I'm looking through the chat. Ah, man, there's way too many. Yeah, I think that what's happening in the in the videos is that they are reorienting their beams at the last second to face towards the middle so that they can create the zero point system on the plane uh, at, at the, right as they begin to converge. And I think that's why we see them reorient as well. There may even be two different. They may the, the thing that's creating the forward facing beam might be a completely separate apparatus to what creates the beam that creates the phase conjugation event as well. Not really sure. Pretty cool. Um, thank you guys for watching the stream tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, they're doing two things at once as well. I think that's what I, that's what I just said. So other people are deducing some of the same stuff. Uh, feel free to go follow me on YouTube, watch on YouTube. You got my subscribe up here, top right for YouTube up here for Twitter. Uh, appreciate you guys tonight. Um, tomorrow I, I'm trying, I'm going to try to get away from some of the debunk stuff. It just, it's kind of boring. I've got a bunch of scientific papers to post out there. Uh, I don't really believe in ghosts, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's some kind of crossover event happening here with like aliens from the future and extra dimensional crap and ghosts. No idea. I'm open to everything, chat. I'm open to everything. When you start talking about warping planes, you don't have the luxury of uh, 
being somebody who's too judgmental anymore at that point. Um, yeah, just teleport some jugs of water to Mars with you. Sounds like a plan. will be good enough. Healing people would be really great. There's a lot of uh, aspects of this technology that are going to be really good. Why are we still burning oil? Great question. Great question. I mean, this is why the people that work on this technology have to have staff psychologists on hand because they need the staff psychologists on hand. Otherwise, people go crazy. Yeah, imagine being in charge of keeping this secret. Imagine the mental pressure on the people that are trying to keep this secret. And even if they blab, they're risking their lives. And nobody's going to believe them anyway. They're just going to go prove it to me. And you're going to go, well, I can't. It's in my lab. It's at Lockheed Martin. I don't. I can't do this in the, at home. <laughs> How crazy is that? <laughs> like, this is why it's so crazy difficult. Um, because even if they were to talk about it, people just wouldn't believe them anyway. That's the truth of this stuff, man. That's the reason why it's so hard for people to wrap their brains around. This is why it's been so easy to keep it secret. This is why I think I haven't been silenced. I think that if I was talking about this in the 80s, I think they would have killed me by now. Because you wouldn't have the same friends like we have right now. You'd be able to kill me and say that it was some suicide thing. I think the two aspects are, A, I'm too high profile. People will figure it out. I'm not suicidal. So people would figure out why they killed me. And then the second thing is, too, I think there's some people that want this information out and I'm kind of unwillingly uh, kind of doing what they want me to do without ever having contacted them. That's my true opinion on what's going on right now and why this information is coming out and, and what have you. Yeah, the community note got removed. Thank you, Elon Musk. Thank you, whoever removed that community note. I appreciate that. I will probably use that extra money because honestly, I think that post alone from this views will probably generate like over $100 in revenue. Uh, I will use that to give people Cosmic Summit tickets. That's coming up in June. There are not the, not the in-person ones. Those are like hundreds of dollars, but there are virtual ones where you can watch all the presentations online. Uh, there's going to be some awesome people. Robert Schock is going to be there. Uh, Randall Carlson is going to be there. Bob Green and Malcolm Bendel are going to be there. So I'm going to give away some of those. I'll probably give away a few on stream. I'm going to give away a bunch to my admins um, to try to get as many people to watch as possible. I'm probably also going to document. I think that's the whole point that George Howard wants me to go there is to help promote it and, and document it because I have a huge following, which that's totally fine. Um, Tom Montauk has good reading on his, uh, on his website. Charles Milligan says, you're figuring it out, Ash, and thanks for sharing on your journey. Yeah, part of this as well is just the journey, man. The journey of this has been a story in of itself, and I've been documenting it on YouTube and Twitter the whole way. That's why I bought this really expensive camera that isn't even the best, but it's pretty good uh, so that you guys can see it. Also, I apologize for it only being in 720p. I forgot about that. I will probably pay to upgrade it to uh, 1080. The problem is StreamYard charges you like double. It's like 20 or $30 a month to, to stream in 1080p. But I'm going to do it because I, I want it, you, you guys to be able to see it in 1080p. Um, ghosts are for real. <laughs> Fair enough. Clap those paranormal cheeks. Um, boy, how far behind am I, am I on the comments here? Okay, I think we're pretty much gone. Location of the fourth orb is most likely somewhere to the west or near the Maldives, but we don't know exactly. So one thing that I'm pretty consistent about, guys, is that I don't uh, make claims that I can't possibly know. And I can't possibly know exactly where the plane went. What I can say is that a B-777, a B-777 fire suppression device washed up in the Maldives. Uh, and it must have been empty. And there was like 20 witnesses on an island that early in the morning hours saw the plane flying south to Diego Garcia and it had come from the west. So that's circumstantial evidence that the plane teleported somewhere, or warped somewhere over to the west near the Maldives and then flew to the south. And I think, oh, can you give us the name of the theories we should know about? So the names of the theories, you want to know scalar physics, scalar interferometry, and you should also know the idea of mixed wave interferometry. So the mixed wave interferometry is when you create your zero point system and then you shoot a beam into that and then you're going to get a beam going back the other way. That's the idea of what we see with this. Scalar physics is the idea of creating that cold explosion that we see um in the videos at a distance and if you want to look up uh coulomb's law you can look at coulomb's law coulomb's law is the idea of the electrical charge force increasing exponentially as the distance collapses as the orbs converge so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit to work on come out check out the next streams over the next few days check out the tom montauk talk 
I'm not sure if we're going to do it live. I'll ask him. If so, it'll be tomorrow at 7 p.m. I will post a, an intro thing for it. Um, and then there will be, of course, more science talk after this as well. Uh, the guy's name, that was Thomas Bearden. Thomas Bearden. I did post a link in the chat. You can go up. I'll post it again just for you guys. So if you want to check it out yourself, you can go down the rabbit hole. He's got like at least five interviews that we've seen. So I appreciate it. Yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern time. If I'm going to do it live, it will be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, we will uh, record it and I will replay it later on. So, um, And then I still haven't posted the Martin Gibson interview. I've just you guys have seen all the bullshit that's been going on. My computer dying. So I will get that uh, updated as well here for you soon. So, yeah, I probably will talk to Tom Montauk about the Montauk monster as well, because it kind of logically falls into that. I hope he's not offended if I do. Anyway, guys, I uh, appreciate you guys. Have a great night. Thank you, MH370X. Uh, smash that like button. Follow on Twitter. Follow on YouTube. And we will be in touch. Peace, everybody. Have a great night. Malaysian 370. Contact with Chimil 120. Decimal 9. Good night. Good night, Malaysian 370. Breaking news tonight, a Malaysia Airlines flight with 239 people on board, including four Americans, has gone missing.